Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sandra Thinks. My name is Sandra von Dufe, the H is silent and I am very excited to welcome you today to this very interesting topic that I think a lot of you will find very very applicable. Today's topic is about the waiting season. We're going to discuss how to embrace the waiting season, um, figuring out all the different biblical insights that you can get that would help you navigate this type of season if you face it. We've come up with 10 steps. Not all of them are biblical, but some of them are very practical and apply to your everyday lives. Now, let us look at the waiting season. The metrics that I'm using to define waiting season is not fully biblical. We're going to use some biblical examples to give context to this conversation, but we've come up with 10 practical steps that apply to your everyday life. But before we delve into that, what is the waiting season? I believe that the waiting season is a period in your life that things seem to pause at a pace slower than what you're expecting. Let me define that again. A time, a period in your life where things seem to pause and occur slower, more different than what you expected. Slower and differently, not what you expected. So I hop in my car, put some fuel, and I'm driving from here to another city. The GPS says it's supposed to take 15 minutes, so I'm ready to be there in 15 minutes. In fact, I have my Netflix movie scheduled for tonight. I've got plans later, I have to read my book, whatever I want to do, right? Now, this 15 minute journey takes 45 minutes. Bruh, nobody has 45 minutes to give to this. It's delayed, it's slower, it's aggravating. Oh my God, I plan to watch Netflix. Who's gonna, you know, I have to, I mean, I have to show up at work tomorrow morning. I'm not ready, I haven't watched my show. I'm gonna be irate in the morning. I haven't had any time to take off some steam. The waiting season. I began school. I've planned my tuition for three years. It's supposed to take me three years to finish this course. Five years later, what am I doing here? My peers are already at the first job and I'm still in school. I'm irate, I'm angry. All of these emotions are coming out. The waiting season. Now, understand that the waiting season at the surface level looks somehow. It looks somehow. It's not what you expected. It is incredibly frustrating. It reminds me of what I said in the other episode where it's one of those circumstances that would try to take your happiness but must never take your joy. There are many examples in the Bible of people that had waiting seasons. So you're not alone. These things have happened. Look at the story of Moses, for example. It took Moses 40 years, 40 years to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. It was promised to him, he knew this was, I mean, he, he, he was already in Egypt and then left the land and only returned in his 80s. So Moses will fulfill his purpose in his 80s. Some of y'all have already given up and you're not even 30 years old. <laughs> You already think that you're too old and you're 35, 25. You know, the best one I like is this list that all these women have, right? When I'm 30 years old, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'll be married, I have three kids. <laughs> Debt free. I'm driving a Lambo. <laughs> and then you're 30 and you still stay in your parents' house and then all of a sudden you think that you're, you're nobody, that you haven't made it in life. You're still not married. You don't even have a you don't even have a stable boyfriend yet. You're, you're still in the talking stage of a five-year-old relationship. <laughs> I'm laughing because we've all done that dumb stuff. We've all held ourselves to impossible metrics that are not, you know, they don't make any sense. They just don't make any sense. We fail to understand the time it was happening to us. What was the waiting season? That this was our Moses time. There was this kind of work that we had to do to lead the Israelites to the promised land. Moses waited 40 years, not 14, 40 years to fulfill his life's purpose to lead the Israelites. 
What I'm saying is that his purpose actually would happen to him at the age of 80 something years old. You know, some of us, we can't take it. You know, at age 30, we only we already feel that we're a failure. And, and besides Moses, you have David. David, King David in the Bible, who was king after a king called Saul, you know. Um, waited about 15 years to become king. And I just can't wait to be king. I'm not lying, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about David in the Bible. And then you have Sarah, who was formerly Sarai, and then becomes Sarah, and who waits about 25 years or so to birth her promised child, Isaac, the one who will become the father to all of these nations, yada, 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 here, hence, here we are. If I came into the world, besides these biblical characters, there's a plethora of great people that we know. Abraham Lincoln, all of these great people who tried and tried and tried again. Those who even, you know, you know this other, this, this another set of actors of people that we know who became famous in their 40s. Viola Davis, one of the greatest today. Look at her career. Morgan Freeman, all these people. There is a waiting season and it's allowed. In fact, I dare say that the waiting season is necessary. The waiting season is necessary because of the amount of transformation that it brings out that you would leave from becoming Sarai to Sarah. What are the things that happen during that season? And what are 10 things that you can do during that waiting season that would transform you or allow you to take advantage of the energies that are surrounding that period of time and allow yourself to be fully transformed into who you're meant to be? Uh, yeah, wait, wait before I go. You can see this like super dope outfit. Actually, you can't see the whole thing, but I'm going to show you. It was sent to me by Rizona Couture and I want you to, you know, patronize them. Show them some love. They're very good with like African dope prints. As you can see, I'm a brother with Africa. they representing, you know what I'm saying? What, 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 what? <laughs> Bye guys. I need to leave this place before my camera guy chases me off. The metric that I'm using to describe what I consider a waiting season is not necessarily only biblical. It is biblical because we would look at no, no, no. you know. Oh no, Moses is going to wait 25 years, wait for 40 years. Sorry. When did I first say it?